This is our last study on the book of Daniel. In the book of, in the book of. How is my sister Tash, uh, Brother Asnes? She, she's okay? As Tash is all right? Oh, she's here. Okay, 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 okay. I, <laughs> she's busy, she's busy, she's busy. Um, our sister Nib is doing well. She's fine. Um, I, I hope everyone knows that if I, if I didn't find her when I did, and um, she would have died, you don't, you don't come out of that, you die. Either you get help or you die. <laughs> and if everybody thinks, you know, Nib runs around the place. God's really smart. I got to preach on that this weekend a little bit. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. How he does it, why he does it. He knows what he's doing. But through all the troubles and tribulations, <laughs> she didn't die. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus! Can you give me a hand clap, please? No dead people in my ministry. I don't want the dead people. Brother Regan, don't go dying on me. <laughs> Stay alive. It, it, doesn't, it does not um, look good on your report when you have dead people. Stay along. Live a long and healthy and happy life. And uh, serve God. And when God's like my mother now, she's 86, 87, and coming down to the end of her days, mom can sit and she can reflect and say, okay, you know, yeah, you know. I want to die at 32, 33. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we're too young for that. We, we still, we're, we're a growing church. Daniel chapter 12. Today is the last day of Daniel. Our last Daniel. Next week we'll pick it up. When do we have the, the month miss? In two weeks. Not the week. Okay, okay. So uh, when you come next week, I'll have a book ready to go. <laughs> Don't you love my life? <laughs> another book. Another year and a half. Every Tuesday. Brother Betty, another, another, another two years. Ah. <laughs> if it was not for God, I would panic. If it was not for Jesus, I would worry. But somehow, I don't know how, somehow his love gives me his word. Don't worry, I'll, I'll be done on time. I'm not going to go very long today. Daniel chapter 12, we're getting to the end of it now. and um, I, skipped, I skipped over uh, verses 11. We read verse last. I'm, I'm a bit loud, just a little bit loud. I hear myself. It says, uh, "Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. And from that time, the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make a desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. We're not going to go into that. Blessed is he that waiteth." And come into the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Not going to go into that. See, I just skipped over all that sort of stuff. I just skipped over all those numbers because I've already dealt with all those numbers and those dates and times are not to be played with. They're, they're for God to reveal in His time by His Spirit. Because if you guess them and they're wrong, I don't want to be like the Jehovah's Witnesses who used to guess God is coming in this year. How many, how many guesses did Jehovah's Witnesses have? where he never came until they realized, okay, that might not be a good idea. It sounds really good when the ministry and the, the leadership of the church and the head of the organization is, is saying it, you know. Jesus, imagine me telling you guys, um, in 2024, on January 14th, Jesus will arrive. How do you know that? Well, if you multiply the 290 by the 1250 and then you, and you all believe me, and then I'm wrong, Kelvin sells his business, can you imagine the problem there would be? So don't take guesses. Let God do what he wants to do. My job is not to tell you dates and times. That's not my job. But they asked him, when, when? And Christ said, the dates and times are none of your business. It's not your business. Because if Christ wanted them to know, he would have given them date and time. But for us, he is not. Uh, everyone's digging in there trying to find dates. So I leave the dates and time. And I get what is, what is um, relevant and pertinent for us and for us to grow in the things of God. But I like the last verse. The last verse. I love it, I love it, I love it. 
Good food there. The angels has given him all these revelations as I have given you a lot. I, I don't care how smart you are. I have given you a lot of revelations. And if you say I haven't given you revelations, you make me a liar. If you say I haven't given you any revelation, then you must be very smart and you don't really need me. But I'm going to say I've given you revelations. You've just forgotten, but go back into the book and see the things I have told you and how they, and how they, how they um, apply to your life today and how modern this old-fashioned book is. And you see, I have, told you a lot, I, I have told you a lot of stuff by the Holy Ghost. I've told you them from God. Let me say amen. amen. And if I haven't done that, then I've not, I've not done my job. We've wasted our time. If you have not grown from the book of Daniel, then I've wasted my time. If you've not learned and, and, and become stronger, in, and I have, I have become stronger in my stature by going through this book. I have learned, I have grown. I have obeyed, I have listened, I have followed, I have done. And where I have failed, oh, help me, Lord, please. <laughs> it's nowhere in my head or heart that I want to fail. I want to live and serve him. But where I have, oh, God. I like how the angel says, at the end of it all, after all these magnificent, profound revelations, the angel looks at him and the angel says, but go thy way. Go thy way. Till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Go your way. Till the end be. For you shall rest. And stand in your lot on the last day. And if you understand that already, then you don't need me. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what it means. I'm going to show you how it applies and what God's actually saying. I've, I've read this several times and I just sort of read over it and kind of didn't understand the depth of it. But the angel is saying something very profound here, and I want everybody to understand it. And it, 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 it is the last admonition to the believer and to the hearer of the mysteries that he has unfolded. His last instruction is go your way, you shall you, and, and then go to your rest. You shall have rest. And Stand in your lot at the end of the days. After all he said, his last three instructions are those three. After all I have said, my last three instructions are those three. Go your way. Abide in your rest. And stand in your lot. At the la These three things. Stand in your lot at, at the end of the days. I want everybody to understand that I'm going to precursor what I'm going to say by the end, but what number do you live at? 37? 37 what? You want to give it away? <laughs> Come steal your stuff. He's kind of like... <laughs> what number do you live at? 51? B. Brother Alex, what number do you live at? 28. 28 what? Because you don't want to say it because you don't want to come and steal your cameras. <laughs> Brother Alex, what, 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 uh, what's, what's your address? 24? Oh, so you all know your address really well, right? Okay. Who did I ask with your addresses? Those four. What's your lot? What's your lot? No, 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 that's your address. What's your lot? No, no, don't look it up. Don't go look it up. What's your lot? Oh, you know. What's your lot? What's your lot? Huh? Oh, you would know, Tash. You just, you just filled out your application, you know? Hey, yeah, <laughs> give him the info, he has no idea. <laughs> but the majority of you who own a house, you have no idea. Monica, you just bought a house. What's your lot number? You don't know. All you know is your address. 
I want everybody to understand that when, you, when you're reading this, this part of the scriptures, he's telling you something quite profound about your end and how you end and what happens to you at the end. You see? Hey! I, I, I don't know about addresses. I don't know if God has an address. Maybe, I, maybe I'm going to live on, because I live on Lord Street. I, maybe I'll maybe I, I live on Lord Street. You might live on Jesus' name, Crescent. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah Avenue. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But one thing I do know, I do know, it is that you're going to a place that is divided by lots. And when he says stand in your lot, he don't mean stand in the stuff I give you, but he literally has a place appointed for you that is your lot. Just know me, what's your lot number? But what's your address? Don't have to tell me because, you know, Brother Alex wants to, Brother Bruce, so we're going to keep it hush, you know? Yeah, my, now I can, you have visitors all the time now. When you're reading your scriptures, you cannot read the scripture outside of the scriptures. The only way for you to read the scripture is with the scriptures. It's the, it's the, it's the principle of hermeneutics, where the scripture speaks and answers for the scripture. You have no answers. What it means by lot, if you are not brave enough to go back in your scripture and see what it means by your lot, stand in your lot, then you don't know what he's talking about. And you're going to think, oh yeah, stand in your place, in your position. No! No! For you who have heard the prophecy, and you who have believed the prophecy, and you who have lived, and I'll get there in a second, there is a lot that's appointed to you. It's already appointed. The angel is telling him, the, your lot's already appointed. Not your stuff or your, you know, your lot as in, oh, uh, uh, don't get in with, old, with that lot over there. You know that, that, that lot, that, no, no, not like that. So you've got to go back to numbers. Let's go back to numbers. Let's, let's be biblical about it. Because if an angel is speaking, he must be speaking biblically, for it's by the same spirit that we have the one scripture. There's no differences in them. So lot comes from, and the idea of the lot within Israel, and what that truly should mean to you, it's found in, in Numbers, so that that microphone is not going to work. Give up? Give up on the microphone or what? Don't give up on the microphone? No. Don't give up? Okay, we'll keep trying. <laughs> Sorry, on Sunday we won't practice like that, but you know, Tuesdays. I mean, look, you come to church in a doona. Look at you. Look, you come on. Come on. It's Miriam now. You're wearing... Oh. You got your fuzzy slippers on, you know, so it's, it's, it's got to be Tuesday, right? So we all can, you know, be a bit more, you know, let your hair down, right, Brother Rick? <laughs> let your hair down a little bit. <laughs> Someone say, thank you, Jesus! Thank you. Woo! God is good. Sorry, man, sorry. God is good. All the time he is so good. Listen to what he says, verses, verses 12, 34, 12 says this. Uh, uh, number 34, verses 12. And the, and the border shall go down to Jordan, and the going out of it shall be at the salt sea. This shall be your land with the coast thereof round about. So this is, everybody say, it's, it's going to be our land. But who gets what? You don't know yet. Who gets what part? You don't know yet. This is your land. You're not going to own from coast to coast. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which you shall inherit by lot. And I cannot go and stand in anybody else's inheritance. Are you going to, didn't the Bible say you're going to inherit with Christ? Okay, well, here is how it works. Say it again. He has a place that's specifically for you. So hear what the angel is saying. He's saying, Daniel, you're saved. If God has a lot for you, it means you're saved. If he's commanding you to go your way, rest in peace, which means you're going to die,
and stand in your lot, he's saying you're saved. At the end of it, the angel is saying to Daniel, you're saved. Why are you saved? Because you've heard the prophecy, you've believed the prophecy, you've lived the prophecy, and you're looking for its fulfillment, even though it will not be fulfilled in your day, but here is the blessing that you're going to get from that. Here is the edification that you're going to get from hearing God's word, believing God's word, and trusting and moving forward with it. You're going to get, you're going to stand in your lot in the end. The angel tells him, Three powerful things. And I have a little bit of an experience with each of them, and I, I, I want to share it with you for a little while tonight. First of all, the thing that he says to him, the first thing he says to him is this. Let's go back over to Daniel again. And let me break down for you what each of them means in the context and the light, because you can't just take it out of its, out of its context of the full book of <laughs> of, of the book of Daniel. Its context is the book of Daniel. Its context is the prophecy. It is the revelation which he has given. Number one. But thou, Daniel, go thy way. Till the end be. Whose end? Whose end? The end of time, but certainly till his end. Because Daniel is gone and the end has not come. <laughs> Can we say amen? amen. Daniel, Daniel is gone. The end has not come. His end came, but not the end of God's work. God's work is still continuing. There's a time called, he says, the end of days. But he, he's saying, hey, Daniel, hey, I want you to go your way till, till the end be your end. You've heard the prophecy? You believe the word? You trust what I've told you? Do you believe what God has said, even though there are things you don't understand and things I told you to seal and I didn't explain to you? You still believe? First thing, go your way. Or, interpret it, live your life now. Go live your life. You've heard the prophecy? You've seen the angels? You saw the brightness of his glory? Did you fall before their presence? Did I, did I show you kingdoms? Did you have dreams? Did you see kings fall and nations rise and go down? Did you see the hand of God upon the kings of the earth? Did you see them tremble? Did you see that they can never turn into a thing of a lizard and, and feather? Did you hear kings bow before him? Yeah, your faith is strong. Go your way. Go live now. Go live out what you have just seen and heard. Go and live what you have just experienced from the word of God now, but for, for Daniel, what he had seen back then, wish I could make it all come real for you guys, but your faith should make it real, for faith is the evidence of things that we have not seen, but yet we know they are there. Go your way. Fulfill the word. Fulfill what God has ordained for you. Find his will. Find what you're supposed to do. Find how you're supposed to live, who you're supposed to marry, how many kids you're supposed to have, what job you're... Go. Go your way. Go your way means everything that God has ordained for you, so shall it be upon you. Go your way. Go and find out. I'm not going to tell you every day, but as you go through every day and you keep on believing and keep on trusting and having what you have experienced impact you as you go forward, as you should, this book of Daniel, go your way and you'll see what God has, what God has done for you. Amen. Can we say amen? You say, I want to go my way now. Hey, Daniel, yeah. Thank you, Brother Daniel, for the prophecy. I'm going to turn to something else now. But all that you have told me and all that you have said, I might not remember it all in the, fulfill, in the totality of it, but it's in my spirit. It's there. It's not leaving nowhere. It's going to direct my life. I'm going to go my way now. I shall leave and go to my jobs. I shall leave and go to my work. I shall leave and go to the preaching of the gospel. I shall leave and I shall go to the building of the house of God. I shall leave and I shall go to the, to, to the care of the saints and looking after my family and being a good example. I shall go and do exactly what God wants me to do. I shall go. Remember the first time I heard those words, it was kind of scary. It was said to me by a prophet. She prophesied something and I asked her, who, 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 who? And she said, go your way, Brother Roberts. And I was so insulted that she said, go your way, because to me, go your way means get out of here. Or in Jamaica, we would say, go <laughs> away. That's, that's, that's real Jamaican, Benny. Go away. 
We like go away. That means that, that's, a, that's an insult. That means go your way, but get out of here. And I, I asked her because she said, I don't know what she's talking about. So I said to her, she said, go your way, Brother Robert. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> so it, 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 it confused me. Because it, it, it somebody said, Brother Regan, somebody you come to me, you ask me something and whatever, and I turn to you and I say, go thy way. That means don't talk to me anymore about it. I won't talk to you. Give me an answer. Well, it actually does not mean something bad, okay, guys? When you're a baby Christian, as, as Sister Fatmata was saying, if I say something, everything means something negative. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Take it in its positive light. Understand what God, God has nothing negative to say to you if he has to tell you specifically. Not for you to guess. Oh, he said, go my way. Go away. God told me, go away. God told me, get out of here. <laughs> God says, come, not get out of here. Go thy way. Go thy way. Go and live everything you've just heard. Go and tell all that God has shown you. Go and re restudy it again. Relearn it again. Uh, Brother Alex, don't mind me. When I'm preaching, I'm a different guy, okay? I need you to do me a favor. Once a week, just once. Put up one message, just once. Yep. That way they can, just once. Once a week, just one message. And you guys can follow that one message for the week. Hear it, take it in, and then go thy way. I'm going to tell you something in the scripture. I'm going to, I'm going to preach something to you, and you're going to hear it. You see, if, if, you, if you listen to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you might not be able to hear on the, and comprehend, but when I give you the message, and you've heard that one thing that's in your spirit, and God has told him about the future, it's now, obviously, it's a fuller, it's a fuller word, but it's all been given to him over a, a, a space of time. Go with it now. How many, how, many, how many times have you heard the word of God and you come, you were depressed, you were sad, you were confused and God spoke to you and then you went your way and you felt a whole lot better after that. Yeah, get the word of God and go your way. Go your way means fulfill what I have said. And it turns out that that terminology, go your way, is used a number of times by the most powerful beings upon the earth, especially Christ. So turn in your, in your Bible to Matthew. Um... Let's go, to, let's go to Acts 9, first of all. Let's go to Acts 9, then we're going to go to John. and Go your way! God's, you know, God's using that, that terminology all the time. Go your way! <laughs> hey, didn't, didn't God tell... Hey, I, I don't know, I'm just saying. But didn't God tell... Didn't, I think he did. <gasps> he did. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Didn't God tell Judas, go your way? He gave him a something, told him, yeah, go do what you got to do. Didn't he? Can you read it for me? I don't want to make a mistake. That's pretty, uh, I think that's very... You see, if the angel is using the same word as Moses, it must be for a reason. And if the angel is using the same word as Jesus, it must be for a reason. And not a regular, oh, just a, oh yeah, whatever. Here is where, here are some, some places where God used that word. He used it in the most substantial of ways. Chapter 9 and verses um, 5 says this. Acts 9, verses 5. 15, 15. <laughs> verses 13. Then Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard many things of verse 13. Lord, I have heard many things of this man. How much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And he hath, he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, what, what does that mean? In that context, what could that possibly mean? You've had the vision. You've seen the vision. I've appeared unto you. You've heard my word. You know what I want you to do? Go do it. Go your way. Go your way means I have, I have, I have ordained something for you. I've told you what it is. Now go your way. You see the power of that word? God himself from heaven speaking from, from the throne above said, go thy way. Go fulfill what I have told you to do. Go thy way. Doesn't mean get out of here. 
Gue. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. <laughs> for he is a chosen vessel unto me. To bear my name. What? To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So what? So what, what did he do? So Ananias? What did Ananias do? Come on, somebody talk to me. But Ananias? What, what did he do? He went his way. Go thy way. He went his way. What way are you supposed to go? You're supposed to go the way that God has ordained for you. Go your way. I think, I, I think the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody. I think the Spirit of God is talking to his church. Because I never knew that till a few minutes ago. I learned that on the way to church. <laughs> go your way means go do what God tells you to do. I'm not, I, I have not pre-thought this wonderful idea. I'm such a brilliant... I heard another preacher preach it. No. I've learned it now and I'm, I'm giving it to you fresh. Fresh manner for you to learn. Fresh manner for you to go home with. You haven't heard the word of God and I've preached everything. And, and the majority of the messages are up there by the grace of God. Brother Alex has done a wonderful job of that. And whatever is missing, you put them up. Then you see them, look them again and say, what did God tell me in, in number 30? What did God tell me in number 19? What did God tell me in number 8? Because he numbered them all. <laughs> Listen to them and go your way. Go do and be and, and act and live what I told you to do. And he went his way. And I'm going to go my way and I'm going to do as much as I can because that prophecy shall be fulfilled and I'm going to do what I can to fulfill it. And you say Amen. Go your way. He is a chosen vessel. Acts, uh, John chapter 4. Let's go to John chapter 4, verses 50. John 4, 50. <laughs> so after a message, I might say to you guys, go your way. Now you know what I'm talking about. Go your way. If God says to you, forgive those who have hurt you. And, <laughs> Oh, 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 Pastor Robert, yeah, but what if, what if it was really painful and what if, what if, <laughs> I'm saying gently to you, no? Do it, and I'm going to say that. Go thy way. And when I say it, you know what I'm, you know exactly what I mean. I'm not trying to offend you or kick you out of my presence. I'm just saying, you know what God ordained for you to do because I already told you, now go do it. it it's not subject to change. And the, and the option is that you don't obey it or you obey it. It's as it's, it's, it's simple as that. So in John chapter 4, verses uh, 50, listen to this, how he, says, how he says it again right here. John 4, 50. Um, there was a, a, a man whose daughter was... Um, um, verses, uh, verses 46. So Jesus came again unto Canaan. Verses 46. So Jesus came again unto Canaan of Galilee where he made the, the water wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum at Capernaum, uh, Sister Belinda, thanks for babysitting. Sister, thanks for babysitting the kids over there. Do an excellent job. Because you know, make sure make, parents make sure they're never, never too far. Uh, parents, make sure they're never too far. If they can't stay here, come sit next to mom. You, you know, the devil is the devil is too intelligent. You know, I don't like that guy. He almost killed my sister. Could have killed her dead. But God's in the mind of the man. Oh, yes, he is. Tell me how to avoid death. Yes, he is. He is in my mind and he tells me what to do beyond what I would even think to do to make sure that we don't get that reproach upon us. I'm going to preach again. Thank you, Jesus. Don't mind me. Someone nearly died in my ministry and God stopped them. I should rejoice. I should be jumping and dancing. <laughs> oh. Sister Belinda, I got your hand on Sunday, and we danced around. La, 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 la. Nobody, knows, nobody knows why we're dancing. <laughs> well, we're dancing. We know why we're dancing. <laughs> Beth was licking its lips. <laughs> but God. He says this. A certain woman who, whose, whose son was a was sick of Camerium. Verse 47. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. And, and Jesus said, uh, then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you shall not believe. The noble man said unto him, Sir, come down or my son will die. 
And Jesus said, that's what the angel said, go thy way. Not get out of here. You see, you're going to, you know, he, but he says, go thy way, uh, comma, thy son liveth. How do how you think he's going to go his way? <laughs> hey, if God says go thy way when death was at your door, you should be dancing. So go thy way is not connected to something negative. It's, a, it's supposed to be connected to something positive. And now that I've done this for you, and I've wrought this miracle for you, and you know that death was going to come on, how are you going to live for me? How are you going to serve me? Go your way now. What are you going to do now? Go your way. It's go your way is always said in the context of something great. But you've experienced from God. And this, and our Bible study in John, in, in Daniel, something great for God did not waste his time for a year and a half. He gave us his word. Now go your way. The prophecy is going to be fulfilled. Go your way. And he says, go your way. <laughs> your son will live. I think he's going to go his way. I think, I, I think he's going to go his way. And I, is that the one man, after he healed lepers, he was going his way. And when the, when, the, when, the leper, when the leper saw what God had done for him, he came back and, and glorified him. And he said, he said, what? Only you came back? Because, hey, 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 sorry, but maybe my spirit's telling me something. I think if you go your way, your way should lead you to God, not away from him. Maybe, I'm just saying that. I'm just making it up as I go along. I think if I go my way, when God says go your way, I think the way he's talking is a way that leads back to him. That's what I think. Go your way. You say you have a kiss your test? Yep. He's with you on the way. Go your way. The way I lead you. The way I guide you. In the context of what I'm doing in your life. <laughs> That's right. Don't just go your way and do what you want to do. Go your way with me. Because if you go your way with me, you, you'll succeed. And whatever you, hey, whatever you put your hand to, you'll succeed. Hey, if you go your way with me and, and negative is coming, I can make positive. But if, that's why Moses, Moses said, God, God said, go. And he said, but I'm not going without you. Remember that? He said, God, he said, I'm not going without you. So go your way means go with God. Don't just go by yourself. Don't mean just, yeah, I'm just going to live my life. And a lot of people are just going their way. Yeah, there is a way. Huh? Too many kids, sorry, I can't hear you. I'm Naomi. There you go. That's right. She said, no, no, entreat me not to leave thee. I'm going back to Israel with you. But... Yeah, but, but, but the other lady, she went her way. Did you end up with God? No. So if you really go your way that God tells you, you should end up, with, you should end up in the way he wants you to. Let's go back to Daniel again. We're going to finish up over there. <laughs> I like when Christ in Mark 10, 52, he says, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. You see, go your way. You, you know, Brother Regan, you, know, you, you think this little words, right? And, and uh, hey, um, uh, Brother Jordan, you, you told me to preach on that little word's big meaning? I mean, wow, that's a big, that's a big topic. I'll have to handle that one <laughs> Maybe not this weekend. Because it, it's such a profound thought. Just go your way. But who would ever think it was connected like this? When he, you don't think that on, because you're not thinking within the scripture. That's like, oh, I, that's what I think. Oh, it means get out of here. Or, you know, just go, go do your thing. No, it means more than that. And the scripture revealed the fullness of it. I'm, not, I'm just showing you a little inkling of what it is. But if you go and research and look it up, it, it means quite a few things. And all very spiritual, all strong things for you. So back to Daniel again. And then we'll, we'll, we'll finish up. For thou shalt rest. Ooh. For thou shalt. Everybody's looking. Turn to somebody and say, you shall rest. What a, what, a, what, a, what a promise. What a promise. Says Nuku. No one beside you. You shall rest. My goodness. Hey? Hey, Brother Dion, I'm proud of you, man. Keep serving along. Hey, Brother Dion, go your way. You know what God's done for you, brother. You know? Go your way. Don't forsake him now. 
Go the way he leads. He says, but you shall have rest. God says this, there is no rest under the wicked, saith the Lord. Am I right or wrong? There is no rest unto the wicked. For he says, for thou shalt rest. But you can only rest if you have not done wickedly. So if you have go your way and you've gone with God, you won't do wickedness. It's my job to tell people what to do sometimes. You don't know. He was going. He was going. No, 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 no. Even better still, one, one time he left. Remember that day? You're like, no, no, Rob. This is uh, this mob. I can't stay with this mob. <laughs> I got to get back to where yeah, Maybe you're right. Hey, when you, when you receive something from God and you know and you said, and you said God blessed you with it, don't turn around and, and walk away. Don't come and tell me God gave it to you. And then you turn around and say, I don't like it. Who are you? I thought you said God gave it to you. Does that have, have to be perfect for you to be okay? Your big baby. Oh, sorry if I stepped on your feet. <laughs> it don't have to be perfect. You said God gave it to you. You said God gave you the wife. You said God gave you the husband. You said God gave you the job. You said God gave you the this. You said God gave you the that. And then you turn around after it and said, Oh, horrid, what did God give me? You, you don't even see, in fact, in fact, when you're about to walk out of the blessing, you don't even acknowledge God anymore. You only acknowledge Him when you're first in there. It's all fairy tale and la la la. Sweetness, you know? Then you start to see how bitter it is. But don't you know that, that it's the bitterness that shapes you? Don't you know you can't change without the bitterness? See, Brother George, my aim is to get to a point, and I'm going I'm to get there, I'm getting there, where I can talk to you from God directly. And I can discern you directly, and I can say to you exactly what you need to do. I don't have to read from my scripture, or read, I have my paper, or anything, but I can tell you I know what the Holy Ghost is saying. You know. God blesses you with something, after a while, you, you, make it, you make it seem like a curse. Bethany, you got some sleep today? <laughs> you wanted the baby, right? You change your mind? Some people are like that, you know, oh God, I want a baby, I want a baby, I want a baby. Then you realize they got the baby, it's like, oh, I don't want the baby. <laughs> Why did God give me this, this baby? It's crying. They cry. The job is hard. Sorry. Hey, brother, brother Dion, bosses, they're, they're, they're a pain. You don't want a boss? Do your own business, you know? But as long as you have a, as long as you have a, bit, you're, you're a boss, you, you're going to boss you around. That's what bosses do. <laughs> I'll, get to, I'll get there. I'm almost done. He said, and, and thou shalt rest. Uh, you, you, you cannot have rest if you keep changing, 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 changing. Brother Dion, are you supposed to have rest? Are you supposed to elevate and get somewhere if you keep changing, changing, changing? You have to stay in what God gave you and don't move. Stay there. Stay through the fire. Stay through the hardship. And then you, the difficulties, they're changing you. Hard, you know, but it's changing you. Try molding you in the fire. Soften up the tough metal. And, and, and making it what it was, stay there. And, re and learn to rejoice in it. And in fact, learn to enjoy it. <laughs> and when you learn to enjoy it, then you never know. Can I, can I tell you that from God? And, and everything that you're supposed, all the changes you're supposed to have. Yeah. Sister, don't run away, you know. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> don't run. You stay there. You stay there, sister. You stay there in all the hardships you get, all the beating you get. You stay right there. What did God say to Hagar? Go back. But she's treating me bad. Perfect. You go right there and, and learn to smile in it. But if you run away, you're going to die in the desert. You won't have no rest. 
But I'm pretty sure after her son became a king and became mighty and became a conqueror, and didn't God say, I'm going to bless him too? I'll bless Esau. I'm going to bless Edom. He's going to be a great nation. You didn't see that when you were a little kid, did you? Stay where you are and stay in the hardship. And when I bring you through, you'll have rest. When I, when I cross the last mile of the way, I shall have rest at the close of the day. When I shall see the great King in His beauty, when I've come the last mile of the way. When I come the last mile of the way, I shall rest at the close of the day. And I shall see the great King in His beauty when I come the last mile that's a long way. A mile is a, the last mile of the way. But keep going, though, until you get there. Then you shall have rest. Don't say, oh, shortcut, shortcut. <laughs> hey, give me a ride. I don't want to walk it. I don't want to run it. <laughs> Try to find another way out. You're going through hardship? Stay in there, please. With the George. Ain't nobody going to get me out of my hardship. Hey? Eh? At, at night time, when, 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 although my boy's getting better though, but this is Sammy, this is Dash, you see this right now? Late night, oh, I gotta rush after I finish, I gotta rush home, gotta rush home. Hey, eh? I put Tammy to bed, I put Cole to bed, I have a special camera, and I've gotta watch him. Hey, eh? I gotta make sure she gets her rest, I gotta make sure Cohen gets his rest. And Brother George, dare I move? When we had, when we had the emergency at, 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 at the church house, I said, Jermaine, 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 come down here. Sit there and watch that camera. And if mom cries for you, you run there. Uh, that's my burden. Anybody else got to do that? And preach on Sunday? And, when I, and I go to bed extra late, so I make sure that, you know, uh, by the time I go to bed, I'm watching, I'm looking, I'm up, and then I get up real extra early, too, because my brain goes, hey, just in case, you know, because sometimes he goes to bed, he gets them. And so my, my hours of sleep become very, very short. Anybody feel sorry for me? Don't. You know, when they're as strong as me, I can carry, I hope I'm strong. I, I keep saying I'm strong. Maybe I'm not strong, but don't try me yet. <laughs> that's my cross. That's my burden. Leave me alone with it. Let me bear it. Gladly bear it. Gladly will I toil and suffer. Only let me walk with thee. But God, I'm the preacher. You're supposed to make it all nice. You're supposed to make it all sweet. I'm not going to speak. Hey, Pastor Robert, if it's sweet and nice, I'm not talking to you. You empty vessel. All these rich men with their fancy this and their fancy that and here I am saying, I bought the opposite that everyone, everyone giggles, yeah, you laugh, but without me doing that, you'll never get a message. Amen. I have to suffer to bring up this church. You know that, brother? But I see, I see that church built, Brother George, and I see heaps of people, and I see it all. And Sister Tammy, I want you to sit down on a chair with us. We're all wrinkly and old by then, you know? Oh, yeah. And, we, and we'll sit down and we'll watch all those beautiful souls. That's my rest. Because I, I, I will finish what he's given me to do. And I'll carry the cross and I won't complain. I'll whinge a little bit sometimes, just a little. But not too much. I'm done. Yeah, we got, we got five minutes. But I should have peace. You won't have peace. My life is very peaceful now because I've done what God told me to do. Jermaine gives me peace. Jaron gives me peace. Darren gives me peace. Caden gives me peace. Cohen gives me peace. My wife gives me peace. My saints give me peace. My life gives me peace. You know why? Because I've, I've been traveling that road. And as I travel down the road, hard at first, but as you travel down the road, you keep walking with God, 
and you keep going your way and doing what you're supposed to do, eventually it's all going to be good. You're, you're, he, God said one time, he said, by now your peace, your peace should have been like a river. You should have become, as, yes, I know, and you're pushing, 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 but as you get closer and closer to the fulfillment, it becomes more joyful. And even if trouble comes, you don't even notice it because... But when, when you come down the end of your life and you, ah, you know, no, it shouldn't be like that. You know, I, I like, I have, I have not gone to see Sister Nib. I don't need to go see Sister Nib. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> I have new rules for Sister Nib. You hear me today, I say it before the living God. I have new rules for Sister Nib. Sister Nib is beautiful. Uh, you hear me today, but she can be a detriment to our ministry because she's not well and she doesn't look after herself 100% because she has great faith. But when she's unconscious there, her great faith is not saving her and that can be a detriment to the ministry. Therefore, my rule sister Anib is, if you don't take your pills, huh? Don't come to church. We love you. Take pills while you're not well. Where's your faith, Pastor Robert? Is there a healer here? I'm not him. I told you guys already. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? <laughs> if there's no healer, take your pill. If there's a healer, go see the healer. If, there's no, if, 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 if you speak in tongues and there's no translator, what did he say? Keep quiet. Keep quiet. It's not because if, the, if God has not provided a healer, do what you need to do in order for the church to function properly. But if there's a healer missing, and you're not taking your pills because you want to be healed, well, you should find a healer. And, and if you could be healed, you would have been healed already. But there's some things you have to carry. You have to bear. That's the best way. So, you come to church? Yes, take your pills. Hi, Nib. How you doing? You take your pill? Yeah, get yeah, yeah, on. Go home and take your pills. <laughs> you know why? Because she should be dead. I can say that now. She should be dead. If the Holy Ghost did not lead my footsteps and guide me in a way to keep her alive, she would be dead. I can't have that. You see, when we had that, we had that, we had that leadership meeting, that was the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. That's very dangerous stuff. That can wreck your church. We have to carry that burden right now. We're preparing to bury and, oh, we have to give and do this and who's going to, you know, I, I, I don't want to. I ain't got time to bury. I got time to, 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 to make people live, not bury. So do what you need to do and, and do the right things. I, got, I still got five minutes. And, and because she lives and everything's fine, and I, I'm telling you, so I preach on it. You know, brother, I'm raised in the house. I'm like full of doubts. I'm like, oh, oh what am I doing? That's not, I should have picked that out. I didn't realize what God had done for me already. He, God already done it for me, but I didn't even realize what he'd done for me. He already saved her. But I if I didn't come and find her, I, was, I would have never known she would have died. Absolutely. You're not coming out of that state. You have to be medically taken out. You stay there till you're dead. That's the state you go into. And I'm, I'm saying to God, oh, <laughs> I've already helped you. It's okay. You doubt yourself too much, but it's okay. So I can have rest. I can go, I can go to sleep tonight. But sister, sister Belinda, you can go to sleep. Have your rest. Right? We have, we have, we have, we have, we have God has delivered us, we can have rest. It may, not, it may not be a big deal to them because they weren't traumatized, but we were traumatized. <laughs> Rid of me? Yes. Yes. Don't know it. Uh huh. That's right. Uh huh. Amen. Uh huh. That's right. Amen. Amen. We saw Lazarus on the earth, full of sorrow, in the grave with a big smile. It's okay. It's okay. Let me get the next one. I'm done. Done five minutes. And stand in your lots. So if I, if, 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 if Pastor Robert 
chiefs on the way and keep letting God lead my steps. And anywhere I got to take this and sharpen this and do whatever, let him, let him do his work, let him finish his work. He, he, he who began a good work, it will completely, he ain't finished, that's okay. But I know he will, I know he's doing it. God, why would he stop? Unless I walk away, he doesn't stop. That's my assurance, I know that. And at the end of time, when I get to the end of my days, then he says, stand in your lot. Did I run away? Nope. Did I leave? Nope. And if I did step out, I step back in. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay on this path, and I'm not leaving. And I'm going to stay in church, and I'm not going anywhere. And I'm going to do, keep doing exactly what God told me to do. Brother George, if you didn't do it yesterday, that's okay. His grace is enough. Paul was a murderer. Eh? And his, his grace saved him. David was a, was a big time adulterer. It's great saving. But David, yeah, fix your, your steps and, 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 and do the right things now. And he did all, the, all of his days. Yes, my sister. Yep. That's right. That find it. That's right. They wouldn't even know how to find it. But God, God, thank you, my sister. But God leads us on that, on that path, on that road that, that we know. We, 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 we got to walk with him and talk with him. And... Can we finish with that song? Jesus walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, oh, none other has ever known. Today, Jesus walk with me, Jesus talk with me, and he tells me that I am his own. Oh, and the joy we share as we tarry there. Another as a oh, I sing like that. Oh, please, I ask you to walk, begging you, Lord, talk, asking you, Lord, to tell me that I am your own. Oh, and the joy that we share as we tarry there. Another as a So we've come to the end. We've come to the end of the chapter, not the end of our lives, not the end of this day, not the end of, the, not the end of this week. We still have a way to go. Lots of stuff have not ended, Lord. But one day something must end, and when we, we want to make this, this walk be a continual walk, now we know what it means to go your way. We're coming out of Daniel now, but we're not coming out of you, Lord. We're going to stay in your will. We're going to walk in your way. We're going to walk in your path and we're going to let, your, we're going to let the, the glorious light of your word guide us each and every day, Lord. We're going to walk therein, Lord. We're going to remember what Daniel said. We're going to remember his vision. We're going to remember the kingdoms of the earth. We're going to remember the beasts. We're going to remember how you showed him how you can take down a king and set another one up. We're going, to, you, we're going to remember that you spoke to great kings of old, how you humbled them, God. If great kings with their great armies and their great hosts, if they, if they were helpless before you, how much are we up on the earth, God? If they could do nothing, neither can we. And if they had their soothsayers and their wise men, if they had their enchanters and they could do nothing at your hand, what can we do? We are less. We, we, we have no hope except we follow you and we walk in your way, God. We thank you for the word that you've given unto us, God. I pray you may change us as how you change the great King Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. I pray, Lord, that you might show us the way of life as you go before us, God. Amen. For you looked at one king, you said, many, many, take lips, Aaron. Your kingdom has been divided. And because he would not walk in your way, and because he did not fear the Lord, you took away from him. But Lord, we want to walk in your way and, and don't take away from us. Don't take my sheep away, God. Amen. For you said, if, if the pastor doesn't do what I want, I'm going I'm to scatter his sheep. Don't scatter my sheep. Don't let none of them die. Don't let them get sick. If they get sick, heal them again, I pray, God. Yeah. We're going to get sick sometimes. Whatever is broken, heal, Lord. Whatever you need to do to make this church be full of love and be full of joy in your presence as it has been here in your spirit, which has been here, let it always be so, God. 
and let your word always dwell within us and, and let it always encompass us about as we go about our day, as we go about our life, let it lead us. Help us to always love it as Daniel loved your presence, Lord. As Daniel loved the, the appearance of the angels of God. Help us to find friends uh, which are not of this earth, O oh God. For you said you're ministering spirits uh, and many have entertained angels unaware. Let them show up. They showed up for Daniel. Why should they not show up for us, God? We need, we need your hand and we need your, your help to make us become what we need to be, I pray, God. As you continue to mold your church and fashion us, thank you for all the children that came out. You saw them come out night after night. You saw when they were tired, when they were weary, when the mother came out, when they were pregnant and with babies, when they had their tribulations and their trials, when it was raining, when it was windy, when it, was, when it, was, when it had horrible weather and everything, else, and they still came out. Why, God, just to hear your word? We came to an end, but don't let your blessings end upon them, I pray, God. Let this, be, let this night and, and the hearing of your word be the beginning of blessings. And those who have not been able to be here, God, let your richest blessings still find them, I pray. For you're a God of grace and a God of mercy. We're going to go to the next book. Lead us in the way that we're supposed to go. Because as the fire moves and Moses followed, even so, God, let the fire move and we shall follow. Let the cloud move and we shall follow, God. Guide us both in the day and in the night, I pray, God. Comfort us, comfort us, cover us around, I pray. Whatever is broken, whatever hearts are broken, wherever there is sadness, wherever there is brokenness, God, we have hope in you, Lord. We can rejoice in you. We can be glad in you, God. We can rejoice in the hope that you have given unto us, God. We can rejoice in the Holy Ghost because we know what you're doing in our lives, God. Oftentimes we look upon ourselves, we see ourselves as insuff insufficient, and we are insufficient. When are we ever going to understand that we're insufficient and we're completely in need of you to do the work in our lives, God? We're looking to you, the author and finisher of our faith, God. Keep your people, guide us, I pray. Thank you for the privilege of prayer, God. And when we don't pray, God, let our hearts always be meditating upon your word, God. And if we're not in the house of God, let our heart always have the word of God. For wherever the word of God is, you're there too, God. Have your truth. Thank you for all the blessings that you poured upon us during this time, God. On the things that could not, that, that you did not want to be. You rebuke death. You rebuke suffering. And you rebuke heartache, God. And where there was sadness, there is now joy. And when there was darkness, now there is light. And so I've just come back again. And thank you. I'll see you again on Sunday in this place, Jesus. I'll see you again on Sunday in this place, God. For you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. And we say glory. And the church said, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So be it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.